I'm so excited. We're here with Laura Copley Smith, who is an amazing garden designer. And I am so impressed. Uh, Laura, last time we didn't have very good connection, but it was a little bit of a teaser. And I started off by saying, are all of those designs yours? And I didn't hear what you said, but are they? <laughs> well, of course. I'd never have anything on my website that wasn't connected to me. You know, of course, it's, it's, it's me, basically. Or nature, should I say. You know, the great outdoors, which is an amazing thing for us all to have in our lives. So, yes. I'm so impressed. You really incorporated stone, uh, nature, uh, water, everything, light. And I'm just so impressed by the elegance, the elegance that you bring to garden design. So I'm excited to dive in and hear, how did you get into this very unique, high scale, exquisite <laughs> uh, industry? <laughs> well, it, it was, it wasn't really planned, to be perfectly honest. It was, you know, all, lots of things in life are like an, an evolution, aren't they? That you move into something and then you start exploring other things. And so some of, some of the reasons why I went into design was that I was in another industry. I was experimenting with sculpture and mixed media and painting in my own time. And, um, you know, form and light and the effects of the outdoors was a really big thing for me. And then I got slightly obsessed with gardening. I was living in the city. I'm a country bumpkin. I felt a disconnection to something. And I was 100% at peace tilling the soil. And so, and I was into energy work and healing and all those sorts of things. So it was it was more to do with that real that inner realization of what the outdoor space, gardens, landscape can bring to our lives. So you know, it wasn't it was it was just this strange evolution of myself that wanted to bring beauty into the world and enhance other people's lives. So you started on this journey, you went to school and then you just, did you look to other people for inspiration or, I mean, cause these are really exquisite, um, high end, I want to say like luxurious, you know, who do you, who do you look to <laughs> for this? Um, well, for, for me, uh, I mean, I, I went back to college and did uh, actually a very short one day a week for a year course. And, and that was kind of it. I had other training from previously, but for the garden design, I just did a very intense course for a year and then launched myself as a garden designer. Um, and I'd say that I was quite green, but I think um, I didn't really, I, I didn't really look for people to be inspired because to be honest, I just found the world so inspiring and I had this real love of architecture. And when I lived in London in my twenties, I'd just go and get on a tube and go into town and I'd just walk for miles because I loved all the, I loved the modern, I loved the classic. And so there was, there's so much inspiration out there without looking for inspiration. Although I will say I do have a love of sort of traditional and classic. So, but there's nobody specific that I'd say um, I've kind of seeked inspiration from it's it's all it's everywhere well yeah you're pulling from london history i mean i know exactly where you're talking about you can just go out and be just inspired by some of the not only old uh, architects but the newer ones as well london is so beautiful stunning yeah so to re recreate that feel in people's 
homes and gardens, it's a, a very nice skill <laughs> to have. <laughs> Well, I mean, of course, you're working with a brief from with the client. So, I mean, as a, you know, yes, I'd be classified as a garden designer. Although I kind of feel that we're more facilitators mm -hmm. because we're, we're part of a, of taking a client and their project and its teamwork and the digger drivers as important as you know the client. Sorry, client, but you know, we're all, I don't mean it disrespectfully. We're all part it's a wedding, of almost. You're all coming together. You're all orchestrating. Um, are you on site then? Would you be on site whilst the garden is being developed and it, throughout the project, you're there with your clipboard? <laughs> well, yes, I have been. Um, I've I've taken all sorts of different roles over the years. I mean, I've been in the industry for over twenty years. And I've done everything from just pure consultancy, one-off consultancy, to being involved in the design and the design process, to being involved in overseeing and management. And, and that shifted depending on budgets and what clients need and want. So, but yes, I, um, I have been called Miss Millimeter Perfect in the past by contractors, um, but, I, I think what's so, you know, as part of that team, it's, it's, a, it's a very personal dynamic that you're creating something for somebody who's going to be living in that space. And so for me, it really has been about facilitating in the best possible way the, the, to give the, to deliver the brief that's enhancing you know not only the property but the future value of that site and and the client's living experience and you know also bringing in green elements and um uh which i'm very big on sort of native and and well more traditional i go veer more towards the traditional for the planting so is this a, um, you know, sometimes when people say, well, how do you create a video and you or how much is it or how long does it take? And it's, it's like, well, how long is it a piece of string? But is it the same thing with gardening? Is there a certain time frame that it takes to build a garden? And is every client different with the involvement, you know, based on budget or how, how does it, it or is it like a wedding? You know, the more you spend, the, the more you get out of it. <laughs> Um, I, uh, every client is different and, um, you know, and every, and, and clients want different levels of involvement. I mean, I've had briefs with quite, what would I call them? Quite high level operating clients that have given me three snippets and it's like, <laughs> what does that mean? You know, or three pictures that you know so and then other people want lots and lots of involvement so it, it really varies because we're all unique aren't we and um and projects can be different they they can be a client can be doing a project for a different reason to add value or because they're going to be or or because they specifically have a vision um and the, so there's it's it's multi-dimensional mm -hmm. there's no there's no rhyme or reason um and um can you work it on two at the same time like are you multitasked to where you'd have a couple of clients going on or that wouldn't work i'm totally multitasked <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how this works yeah, well, you see, you can be involved in something and, and the level of involvement is full on mm -hmm. and you're on site all the time. Or you can be involved in something where your, your level of being on site isn't necessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not being funny, but, you know, the, the, you're not always needed for everything. Right. And if you've got good contractors involved, and it depends, you know, you might not be overseeing, you might have specific involvement 
at key points. It's, it's a bit like most businesses. Most businesses are not, you know, things need to be fluid, don't they? Mm -hmm. To be meeting what the client needs and, and the budget. The budget might not need you or want you to be involved for the whole journey. So I'm, I'm very flexible in how I work because everybody needs something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's, that's how I, I see it. And, and there's big projects and then there's smaller projects and everything in between. Oh, wow. So has the last year impacted your business or are more people getting out into the garden and wanting to be more with nature? And <laughs> I, um, I think that the last year has brought people's attention to their own garden. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say, and, and um, yes, I was back on site as soon as uh, we could, we were allowed to go out from lockdown. I had people on the, on the phone um, wanting me seeing whether I'd come out to site and what have you. So um, it has impacted the, the industry because of course the horticultural industry was very affected and you know there was a lot of plants that were destroyed and um, garden centers have been open. I think it has honed people's attention onto the garden. Mm -hmm. However, what I'd also say is that um, you know, the economy is shrinking. So that's also, maybe people are really busy, you know, creating gardens now because people have got the money mm. or because, you know, the effects of what's been going on hasn't yet hit everybody. Mm. So I think it's a moving, uh, it's a moving thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know? it's, 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 it's <laughs> It's kind of a catch-22. All of the negative things that COVID brought, it did bring people's green thumb uh, mm. to the to the story, and and people are getting out and using their garden to grow food, get back in nature, just have that relationship with something that grows, really, something else on the planet that has a consciousness. Um, it's nice. It's nice to explore and and. I just feel there's going to be more people tapping into your expertise on how to make a garden look nice or, you know, where do we put these plants? <laughs> They're going to need like a designer almost. So, so we all can, uh, not, not survival. It's not the survival, but I don't know, just. <laughs> well, it's, enhan it's enhancing yeah. the living experience, isn't yeah. it? And, and, and that was, I mean, the core essence of, of what was my driver was to um, bring more beauty into the world, bring more beauty into people's everyday living. And, you know, someone might think, well, how can you make a backyard beautiful? Well, you can enhance any space, quite frankly, you know. And I think that, yes, there's also been um, more emphasis on connecting with nature um, and, and I think that growing food and vegetable and kitchen gardens will be more of a, a thing going forward. Maybe out of necessity, maybe purely because it, it just becomes more popular, already is popular. Hmm. Well, 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 Laura, I am so excited to know that you have, a, you know, this design element that we can all tap into, but that's not the only thing that you're working on. And I was also really uh, pleasantly surprised to know that you're also getting your money situated and learning about the different options that we have, Bitcoin, crypto. Can you talk a little bit about your side hustle whilst you're doing design? You say you're a multitasker. You're also doing stuff into this new space and you're, you're, getting quite a bit of success from just that bit of focus so 
Yeah, well, stra strangely, that all came about because of what's just happened over the last year. And, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for that because, um, and it was really kind of my interest um, was has been through a specific platform. But when we, with the COVID and when everything was shut down, it really brought my attention to the financial world, to, you know, how does the economy and how do people's businesses operate when everything's closed? And that just, I just became a little bit obsessed with the financial world mm -hmm. and all the crypto stuff going on. And, and, and that was really how I was drawn to the Forex trading platform I'm involved in now and the crypto and the Bitcoin. And I'm never really, you know, that's never, it's, it's always been about introducing beauty and bringing beauty into the world. And the, the money for me was the side element. But this whole last year is com complete shift for me. You know, we can't do so many things if we haven't got the money and we all need that. So, so, you know, that's become quite a big side hustle for me now. And you're having fun? I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. And, but I think the important thing is that, you know, as somebody who's had the money as a side issue to now be really educating myself and learning and fascinated with that whole that whole sphere is you know is really it's really exciting have, actually. yes it is exciting because it's brand new territory it's you know a new way of banking and communicating and growth you know uh, financial growth so it's so good you've got your fingers in the industries that we we need focus on so laura copley smith is there anything else you'd like to say as we wrap up this very interesting uh i don't think it's going to be the last interview too we're going to probably have a lot more to talk about as the the months get a little bit more stranger here um because you're my truth friend and i love talking truth with you so <laughs> we'll have to get a little bit more controversial next time <laughs> yeah well we can can't we i think i think the only thing that i would want to i think the thing that i'd want to say is that you know this whole thing to do with gardens and designing was birthed through my knowing my inner knowing of how important it is to connect with everything you know all all that amazing stuff outside so you can live in a city and it's full of concrete but you go outside and you connect with the sky you know you find a park you find you find somewhere that's got trees you hug a tree whatever you know but you know you live more rural i don't live rural but i've got access to amazing landscape that the mod go and train on and i can just literally walk there in minutes and walk for miles so i think getting people getting outdoors and and noticing the beauty that is in our lives that is that is what i would end this with